Before Impressionism, art was controlled in a very careful fashion. The biggest art show in Paris, called the Salon, was in fact the only art show in most of France. The Salon was run by a jury of artists from the Academy of Fine Arts, the biggest art school in France. They controlled what got into the show and handed out awards to the pieces they liked and agreed with the most. For artists, this was their end goal, where they would get most of their publicity and money, like with movie makers and theaters, except there was only one theater at a time. Through this, the Salon basically controlled art as a whole and decided what art styles the public was allowed to view and enjoy. They also greatly supported the current French Emperor, and thus any works that painted him or themselves in a negative light would be rejected and ridiculed. It was an art dictatorship. At the time, art was rather different from the kind of art we know of today. Today, the most common type of art we see is different branches of realism, which is all about reality, being down to earth, the ordinary. Back then though, there was only one or two main styles, academic art and romanticism. They both involved the surreal, fiction, fantasy, and idealism. Instead of being down to earth, it was about being up in the clouds with perfect portrayals of wonderful times. It was all about escaping the cold, cruel reality in front of you. Impressionism resisted this and showed the things around them as they truly looked, with a rough look that was less bright and spoke back to the audience more directly. It took the idea of realism and used it to strike back at the Salon and the controlled political atmosphere of France at the time. One of the first big founders of Impressionism was a man by the name of Gustave Courbet. He was born in a small town in the country to a small middle class family. When Courbet first started as an artist, he heard about realism, which was a minor salon art at the time that was accepted to some extent, but only in one form. Landscapes that portrayed nature, but not much else but pure untamed wilderness. Although the salon doesn't care much for the style, Courbet likes the look of it. He starts to combine the real look with the directness of flyers and posters along with hidden political tensions and views that the rest of art tried to ignore and forget. This would be the foundations of Impressionism. From nearly the beginning of his career, Courbet resisted the art style that had become the norm that everyone used. One of his early works managed to get into the salon, and it created quite a bit of an uproar because of how it portrayed a small group of commoners walking down a dirt path. The painting portrayed the commoners in a serious fashion, which sharply contrasted from the comical way that commoners would normally be portrayed in art if they were portrayed at all. Artists and upperclassmen found little with the painting they could relate to, and it is a prime example of how Impressionism at the time was a form of rebellion from the norm and the dictatorship of both the government and the Salon. The second big precursor to the Impressionist style is Edward Manet, and he adds further touches to it that separate it from its predecessors, such as realism, and gives it a unique look. As an artist, he was very much the opposite of Courbet, being a posh, high-class artist instead of a revolutionary middle classman. At the time, the French government, starting with Napoleon III, started to use something called consumerism to distract the people from their suppressed lives and enjoy the pleasantries the government provided, such as art and theater, as well as other similar distractions. Manet saw how art had become a way to lie and satiate the people, and he wanted to change that. Manet changed the look of Impressionism. His paintings were unique in the fact that when he painted something, it wasn't always about some hidden or dual meaning, but rather he often painted scenes in order to merely show off paintings and the things they're made of, such as color. He often painted to merely create an aesthetic experience. One such work is his painting of Emile Zola and how it shows off all the usual pieces and features of a painting, but at the same time, it's also a painting about the colors yellow and black, and how the colors can go together in a unique fashion. 
at the time, many of the newer artists and small-time idealists would meet up with each other at restaurants and other gathering places and talk about their ideas and thoughts, some of it philosophy, some of it revolutionary in nature. Manet would come to these places and show off his paintings as well as discuss them with his colleagues. This is also where we discuss many of his ideas about art with people like Edgar Degas, Pierre Auguste Renoir, or Gustave Courbet himself. In comparison to other artists like Courbet, Manet is much tamer, merely trying to bring about a new look to art, not strike out against the government or any political movement, but even so, he has a profound effect on the look of Impressionism. The third and probably the most important of the early Impressionists is Claude Oscar Manet. Manet took the styles and ideas of the previous two artists that we've talked about and combined them together, giving it his own touch. Although all these artists are important in their own right, he's the one that best follows all of the different principles that make up Impressionism. Unlike many of the other early Impressionists, he stumbled upon the rising art style by accident. He was born at the low end of the middle class and raised along the coast of France. When he was young, he did caricatures of the locals and sold them to pay for art lessons. At one of these art lessons, he met Renoir, a fellow young artist who introduced him to many of the rising impressionists like Manet and Courbet. After meeting and talking with many of the rising impressionists, Manet incorporated parts of their style into his art while giving it his own personal touch. Although all the previous artists we've discussed merely use pieces of Impressionism main traits, Manet is the first one to truly combine them all into a single style of painting, which formed the first true base for Impressionism. He took Courbet's love for the real world and outdoors, as well as Manet's style of creating visual experiences with color, and combined it with a touch of formalism, which is similar to Manet's style and how it focuses on creating art, not to represent something else, but to create something pleasing to the eyes. This is the first true Impressionism style, instead of just one of its roots. Oftentimes, Manet would go out with his fellow colleague Renoir, and they would go out to the countryside and sketch and paint together. On one occasion, they went on. They sketched the exact same scene of a restaurant floating on a river. These sketches highlight the difference between art of the time and the new Impressionism style. In Renoir's painting, you see a beautiful scene with every detail carefully captured in an oil sketch. But in Manet's painting, you see a rough look, similar to when you use a tiny resolution for a large screen. This affects the painting by changing what's important in the painting itself. Instead of focusing on what the painting is all about and how it's portrayed, it instead focuses on the individual characteristics of the painting and comparing one brushstroke to another and how all of these different pieces and patterns come together to form one picture. After years of having to put up with the Salon and their suppression of art, Manet and a few of his friends and colleagues finally decide that they weren't going to put up with it any longer. He gathers up a bunch of different artists like Renoir and Degas and he decides to put together his own art group, the Anonymous Society of Artists, to rival the Academy of Fine Arts who run the Salon. This group is the basis for the Impressionism style movement. They would go on to create their own art show, which, although not very successful at first, would come to destroy the level of control the Salon previously had over art. The fourth and final leading Impressionist, Paul Cezanne was the one who took the art style that the previous three artists had created and carried it with him into the modern world. He adapted Impressionism, giving it a new touch and making it more similar to what art would become in the 20th century, which helped stop it from potentially fading away as time passed and the centuries went by. He grew up as the illegitimate son of a bank owner who helped pay for a good art school for his son. 
For many years, he struggled to become a successful artist, eventually being forced to live a double life as a poor artist and a bank worker under his father to pay off his debts. After 1871 and the war between France and Prussia, Cezanne became friends with Camille Pissarro, who taught him of Impressionism. Cezanne was one of the artists who created the Impressionist art show, although at the time he wasn't as well known as some of the other figures in the show. One of his works in the show mocks both himself and Edouard Manet. Cezanne's presence in the show discouraged Manet and a few other artists from participating in the first show as many people found Cezanne to be shy, irritating, and overall he seemed to have pretty bad social skills. Not many people liked him. After his father died, his family fell apart, with his wife never having loved him in the first place. During this time of personal instability, he developed a more modern form of Impressionism. He painted his wife in a few of the paintings that he made, and in these paintings, she would seem emotionless and void. To make up for this, Cezanne painted the work loosely, which gave it a tender, delicate feel, conveying emotions in place of the figure itself. This gave the painting a look that is both parts atmospheric and clouded, while adding a solid feel to match it. After developing his style further, he finally started to find some success later in his life. He took a look at certain classical artists and became further interested in the concept of solidity in art. He started to paint still lives that were artificial with their muse carefully presented, but at the same time he did nothing to hide the artificialness of the painting itself. He mixed the solid with the transparent and showed how art will always be constructed and an invention. At around this point in time, Manet and Courbet have died, and Manet has become a millionaire off of his works. It's only after this point that Impressionism starts to reach the real height of its popularity and becomes a truly mainstream art style. Thus, we reach the Impressionism that the art world knows and loves today.